All right, John Fields here. Uh, we're gonna make a quick video about some uh, TO3 output transistors and a problem that I've discovered recently with some uh, amps from a certain era from the mid 70s through about the early 80s. Uh, anyways, uh, I'm gonna take a look at this one here. We have this uh, Session 400, which was built in 1980 as far as I can tell uh, from the date code on the, some of the original transistors. Um, what I was going to show you today was a deal where uh, back at, at a certain time uh, they uh, decided that using these uh, mica spacers on the uh, transistors with the thermal grease that you need to uh, transfer heat from the output device to the aluminum heat sink, they decided it would be easier and cheaper if they swapped to this plastic pad that they could just rip off of a sheet and stick on there and there was no liquid bond or surface to surface bond in it but anyways it worked great works great for about 45 or 50 years and then they start to fail and I've been seeing uh, I don't know I've seen at least a half a dozen of these uh, fail probably in the past two or three months so I figured there was a trend since these amps were getting to be about that old now uh, so anyways I just if you want to identify an amp that has that what you would do is you probably have to pop one you can look you can tell without taking the plastic cover off if you look here you can see that there's just like a little sheet of material in there in that crack um, and then if you take one of the covers off let me show you how you do that you just basically take a number two phillips head screwdriver and, re and remove that screw Be careful not to push uh, push on it push pressure that way just try to take it out and then uh, as you can see on this amplifier we have four Motorola devices from 1984 and two from 1980. So these two are original and they were from the time period at which they were using these uh, plastic silica pads or sil silicone impregnated plastic of some sort pad. And uh, anyway, these four devices have been replaced and whoever replaced them went the cheap and easy way and kept the old pads on there they failed about four years after the amp was built which you know you see sometimes so uh, if you want to go for it I'm going to replace all of these with a, a nice brand new set of um, Motorola what's the number on these now MJ 15024G's um, I've, I've done about a like I said about a half a dozen amps with these and they sound fantastic um, you don't have to rebias the amp or worry about any of that kind of stuff you just pop them in there and the amp bias is slightly hotter and uh, there's there's no detriment to it it just runs a little warm and idle but it's not a not a problem it, um, but it eliminates all the crossover distortion you might ever get or anything that uh, you may have to worry about in the power amp which is uh it's a discrete power amp you know from uh, back in that time but anyways to get these transistors off um make sure your amp's unplugged and all that Basically, you'll take this second screw here and just start backing it out without putting pressure on it because there's a socket back there. Um, and we're going to put that in there. Now, basically, you don't want to breach that little thing right there. So you just kind of grab the edge of it with pliers and jig a little, little like that. Um, on the inside here, there's some pins that go into there. So, you know, the important thing is that completely unprepared uh, so basically I'll take my pliers and grab the edge of that little ear and just kind of yank that out a little bit and you see the thing come off here so let me get this back down all right so anyway this is a uh, replacement Motorola SDA 6357-2 which was supposed to be an improved part if you pop the cap off of these there's just like a tiny little die with a couple of cat whisker wires going over there they're not very good parts the, these uh, newer Motorola parts are fantastic but anyway this is the little silicone pad that I was talking about and they're not bad in and of their self they're just they're just not perfect and if you look you can see a little bit of a cross hatch right there that means that the device wasn't pressed flat against this heat sink at all and also there's a little bit of paint on this heat sink which is you know that's not good ideally you would want a flat clean surface here 
for this flat clean surface to match down. There's not enough thickness here to displace the space between the flat part of this transistor and the flat part of this device here. So basically what you would do is you get a new device <clears throat> and these spacers are the old school stuff. They're made of actual mica which is a rock. Um, so it comes off in slivers. I have no idea how they get it to be in flat sheets like this but to, to use it basically you just make sure everything's real clean and then you uh, take your uh, thermal compound. Uh, Thermaloy makes this. Um, I can't remember the part number but anyways I put it into these syringes these little 12 cc syringes and you want to have about a just under an eighth of an inch bead maybe a, like a 3 30 seconds bead. The way I like to do this is uh, I like to put it on the device first and what I'll do is I'll run the bead in between from here about like that and just kind of come around here like this and draw a couple of D's on there that amount usually works out just about right you want it to squeeze all the way out to the uh, extents of these. Now I got these mica spacers on Amazon. They're 200 for about 12 bucks. Um, they seem to vary in thickness a little so I'll go through and make sure I have a bunch of real nice looking ones. Now you just go, you put the mica spacer on and it only goes in one direction. So then you go back and you do the same thing on the other end of the mica spacer. And whoops. Uh, that doesn't really matter, but you do want to keep it clean. You don't want a bunch of goo coming out and messing up your day. That's not it's just it's always. It's, there's nothing like reaching around behind one of these amps and touching that this stuff, and then next thing you know, it's everywhere. It gets everywhere. I'm sure I'm going to have it all over me when I'm done with this. All right, now to put it back on, you just kind of rest your fingers behind those two screw holes. Make sure you put it in the right direction. You just kind of feel around for the holes there and snug it in there. And then you take your screw. Um, I don't know the torque spec for putting these in, um, but you'll feel it. Keep your hand on that socket when you're screwing that in. And basically, look, when you're turning it, use two fingers like this until you get it to a certain point and then you know you'll feel it kind of sn now you'll see that spoo come out there that I put on it that's that means that it's pretty much everywhere it needs to be which is great uh, to finish it up you put the cover back on there um, the cover does not contain the spoo it makes a big old mess but uh, instead of trying to clean it up before you tighten the second screw just put the second screw in there and if it wants to get a little messy under the cover, that's fine. Just clean it up afterwards. Um, let's see. The important thing on that is you want it to, you see it all coming out there, which is good. You want it tight. You want it snug with your hand, you know. Um, snug while you're trying to do like that. And uh, probably 15 foot pounds or so. Um, and then when you're done, you just take a rag and uh, just kind of sharpen it up like that. Get in the corner. That won't mess anything up. You know, on a, and it'll be off of there enough to where you don't have to worry about it getting on, the, on your hand after you're done. So anyways, that's how you replace a TO3 transistor on a Session 400 or any other people. There we go. See, I'm going to touch my face here. I'm going to have it everywhere because that's just what happens. So anyway, that's how you replace a TO3 transistor on the back of a mid-70s you know, mid to early 80s uh, PV amplifier of many types. And anyways, I'm going to go through and replace the other uh, five transistors on this as a set. It's, it's good if you can go ahead and just do them all at one time. It's not good to just do them in, in pairs like this guy did here before. But uh, anyways, um, 
we'll uh, stay tuned for some more good videos. I have some Session 400 stuff coming up soon uh, concerning some mods. And also, uh, a, uh, I'm going to finish up the Van Halen tour amp that I had a while back. Uh, so anyways, thanks for uh, checking in, and we will see you later.